the creation. In this Bible story, we discover the beginning of the universe, God's poetry spoken over the void and chaos turning into order. God speaks the world into existence, and with his voice, all life and meaning came. All is good. Inspired by the book of Genesis. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. Today, we're going all the way back to where it started. We're taking a look at Genesis 1, in the beginning. So begins the greatest story ever told. We start out our journey on the Bible here at the beginning. It's total darkness, a great void. Then something happens. God speaks. This is the story of creation. God making something out of nothing. And not just something, everything. It's what theologians call creation ex nihilo, or creation out of nothing. Here God's word of power is fully on display, his voice commanding our whole universe to spring forth. As you listen, picture the awesomeness of each event. When God speaks, light and darkness are separated. Stars, planets, entire galaxies burst onto the scene. Imagine the mountains springing up from the waters, the animals and trees and fish covering the earth and the rivers and the oceans. It's a spectacle of creativity, and it all happened through the power of God's Word. But God didn't create willy-nilly like a mad scientist. He created with brilliant design, intent, and love. As you listen today, take notice of a powerful truth God repeats over and over with each act of creation. The passage reads, and God said that it was good. God doesn't make junk. He makes everything perfect, not a single thing out of place or not according to his plan. God not only speaks things into existence, he speaks order into the chaos. This story reminds us that God isn't a God of confusion or disorder. And through it all, God was thinking of you, people like you and me and our ultimate place in His created order. He created us in His own image with a unique purpose unlike anything else in creation. Humans, as you will see, stand apart from the rest of creation. And it's not until God has placed His imprint through mankind on this world that He will say, it is very good. This is where it all begins. So let's get started. In the very beginning, out of nothingness, God formed and created the expanse of space and the details of earth. The earth was empty, chaotic, and without life. God's spirit hovered over the empty and chaotic void. Then, at an instant, God spoke. Let there be light. He called out, and there was light, just as he commanded. For from God's lips springs forth reality. The earth was now filled with light, and with it the potential for life. The light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. So God named the light day, and the darkness night. There was evening and morning the first day, and this was good. The waters, roaring and in disorder, were spoken to next. With the power of his words, God spoke order to the elements. The waters were separated from the atmosphere, and the skies were apart from the earth. There was evening and morning, the second day, and this was also good. Then God said, Let the waters gather, and the dry land appear before them. And just as he said, there it was. The waters traveled, gathered, and scattered. The land rumbled, shifted, and emerged from among them. A beautiful dance to the words of their creator. He called the gathered waters seas, and the dry land earth. God looked at all of creation, though beautifully incomplete, and saw that it was good. As an artist adds color to a blank canvas, God adorned the earth with beauty. He made trees, flowers, fruit, 
vegetation and grass. This was the third day, and God saw that this was also good. God was also at work in the rest of the universe, creating stars, suns, galaxies, and all the other mysteries of space. Let them be seen in the night and used to measure signs, seasons, days, and years. Already, God was thinking of humanity. There was evening and morning, the fourth day, and God saw that this was good. After the revealing of light itself and the adorning of plant life and all of its beauty, God created living creatures. First was the dwellers of the sea and the explorers of the air. All living creatures in the sea and birds of the air were created to roam the depths and heights of the planet. All these things God spoke with the word of power. This was the fifth day, and God saw that this was good. Then God spoke again, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of all kinds. Once again, out of nothingness and chaos, life sprung forth. Beasts of all kinds began crawling, roaming, and grazing the earth. Then God said, Let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, and they will care over the world. So God, with his own breath of life and word of power, created mankind. He then charged them with caring over the earth and all that is living in it, his desire was to give them purpose and enjoy the world he had created in relationship with him. For mankind was the only created thing stamped with the image of its creator. And on that sixth day, the once void earth was filled with life. This, God knew, was very good. God had taken the chaotic void and inserted purpose. The heavens and the earth were filled, and his piece of art was complete. So on the seventh day, God paused to enjoy what he had done. So he blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Genesis is the beginning of our story. But before anything existed, God was there. God didn't appear at the time of creation. We see that when there was nothing else, God was there. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were present at the dawn of time. He is our eternal, past, present, and future God. And he chose to create this world, including you and me, for his glory. Now, that's amazing. No matter how many times I read it, the creation account never gets old. I never cease to be struck with the awe and wonder at just how great our God really is. We cannot even fathom this kind of power, mere words birthing our planet and the infinite mysteries of space. I just love how this story speaks to the order that God brings to things. Where there was chaos and confusion, he brought things into order, into a perfect functioning according to his purposes. That same power is alive today. God silences the chaos and takes away the darkness. He creates order. Listen to Genesis 1, 3, and 4 again. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. I absolutely love those words. God separated the light from the darkness. It was like a foreshadowing of what he would do one day through Jesus, the very light of the world, and the one scripture describes as the word made flesh. You may even want to write down those verses and hold them in your heart to remind you of what God has done and can do, will do in your life. God speaks light into your life through the power of his word, his son, Jesus. And through him, he also restores the purpose for which you were made created, the purpose that all mankind was created for, which we hear in today's reading. We are to be caretakers of this world he created and to enjoy all that he has made. Don't miss that. You and I are made to reflect God's image, to care for the world that he has made, to enjoy his presence, and to enjoy what he has created. 
How well are you living out that purpose? But the creation story isn't just about what once was. It reminds us of where we who follow Christ are headed, a return to a world where everything is good and we are free to live out our purpose and to enjoy God and his creation now and forever. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this wonderful story of your creation and how it shows us your incredible power and care for every detail of this world that you have made. Thank you for creating us in your image and for filling us with your purpose. Help us to live with that purpose front and center in our minds and to reflect your glory to those around us today. In Christ's name, amen. Thanks for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love. By sharing this podcast, you can make a difference in someone's life. And if you want more resources on how to tap into God's power for successful Christian living, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.